Following Thursday's much-anticipated trifecta of speeches from Jean-Claude Trichet, Ben Bernanke, and President Obama, the financial markets now turn their attention to the next potential round of government intervention. There's a rumor, and Morgan Stanley's reporting on this, that the G7 might do some massive intervention over the weekend. I'm joined now by Mark Faber. He is the publisher of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom Report. Uh, and, and, Mark, what do you make of the fact that the, the markets right now are so hinged, seemingly, on every comment out of policymakers, not just here in the United States, but all over the world? Look, I have a TV in my office. If I switch it on once a month to look at the news, that's about it. I'm not interested in the garbage these government officials broadcast. Either they are lies or they are distrustful. In other words, you cannot trust them anymore because they produce statistics that are completely realistic. It's like what the BLS in America publishes in terms of inflation rate doesn't account for the true cost of living increases you and your family and all your viewers have. And so I'm not so interested in what Mr. Bernanke has to say and so forth. Basically, if you believe in a market economy and the capitalistic system, then you don't believe in government interventions. Because if you believe in government interventions, it, the consequence should be that you believe in a planning economy like the Russians had, the Eastern Europeans had, and China had. In other words, socialism and communism. That is truly an interventionist economy. And what was the result? An impoverishment of everybody at the expense right, well, we seem to be living of in this... government officials. Right, we seem to be living in this world where... You know, we're straddling that line between living in a world of, of a free market and living in a world that where the free market is being dictated and, as you said earlier, manipulated by central bankers around the world. So, so how do you think this all plays out? Do, does, the, does the market well, collapse like on itself? Here, I'd like to make here a distinction, say, in Asia, in Asian societies. If you don't, you have nothing. Nobody will give you anything. The government doesn't come in and helps you. The problem is that the baby boomers were born into a generation of entitlements. Whatever you do, if something goes wrong, the government will step in and give it to you. You're sick, the government will pay. You, crack, you cause an accident on the highway, the insurance to be paid by the government will pay, and, and, and. And all I'm saying is basically, if you want to have a properly functioning economy, it has to be a market economy with all its drawbacks and with all its disadvantages and the pain for individuals. But that is the only way it will function. Right. Well, it, it sounds, I mean, obviously that's an issue here in the United States, but it sounds like they have a bigger problem with this in Europe where the situation seems to be uh, unraveling by the day, yes, not the week and the month. That is correct. But in Europe, we have accumulated savings that are larger than in the United States. And yes, we have some problems in Greece, Portugal, Spain, Italy. And in my view, the best would have been when the problem started two years ago to kick it out of the EU. But why didn't it happen? Because the bankers went and cried and said, we're going to go bankrupt if we have to take losses on Greek bonds and Papa State, please bail us out. And so the problem has grown much more. So, so, Mark, it sounds like you think that the situation in the U.S. is worse on the whole than it is in Europe. Is that, is that a fair reading of what you're, how you see things? Yes, but the U.S. has a huge advantage. It has the printing press. And they're going to print and print and print with, of course, unintended consequences. One of which was obviously the decline in the value of the U.S. dollar. And another one was, of course, the increase in the cost of living of many people. And don't forget, the intervention monetary-wise to keep interest rates at an artificially low level has a very negative impact on the whole state pension fund industry and the insurance 
industry. And anyone you living on a fixed income, is, fixed income as well, and savers, it certainly punished savers as well. So we, we, we do have to wrap it up, but I do want to ask you, do you think the Fed is going to come in with QE3 or Operation Twist or some other new policy action at a September 2021 meeting? They'll come in with some kind of package, but they won't call it QE3, but indirectly it will be QE3, and then there'll be more QEs until the final collapse happens. All right, thank you very much. So when does the final collapse happen? Do we have a year or 10 years? What do you think? Well, I don't know. It could be three years, 10 years. I don't think it will happen right away. 